Good afternoon. Welcome to Northern Maine Productions. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate a piece of recording history here for you guys today. Uh, what is it? Well, this is a gift from a friend of mine. Uh, somebody gave this to me about a year and a half, two years ago. This is a this is an Akai, this is an X1800 SD reel-to-reel uh, -reel tape recorder. Um, as you can see, this unit is still in very good condition overall. Uh, this unit has never been restored in any way, it's all still completely original. Um, this unit has several features. Of course, we have our power button here. Also, this unit uh, has an 8-track player in the side of it over here. Um, the original intent for this machine, I believe, was to... Uh, this was built in the time when um, portable formats were becoming popular, you know, to take in your car or whatnot. And, this was built to transfer your music from reel, reel to reel tapes, which were not very portable, to 8-track cartridges, which in 1968, many cars were starting to come equipped with 8-track cartridges in the, in the radio. And also, there were many aftermarket ones at that time, too. Um, my friend actually bought this unit brand new. He bought it overseas when he was in the service. He told me he bought it in 1968. And he told me that he paid a substantial amount of money for this thing back then. I, I can't remember exactly what he told me. I'm thinking somewhere in the ballpark of $500. Quite a lot of money back in 1968. So, we have our power button here, and I'm actually going to turn this unit on. You can hear that it does have just a little bit of a hum to it when it's running, and that is not actually an audio hum. That is actually the motor inside of that thing. It actually has a pretty substantial motor in it. Um, of course, this is the recording heads here. Uh, it's your capstan drive and your pinch roller and this unit this little arm here is for the auto shut off mechanism let's say if I turn the switch turn the auto shut off on you can see that it shuts the machine off but when you pick this arm up it turns it back on um, this is a pause lever this keeps the machine powered up and keeps the audio powered up however it stops the tape this function this uh, function right here has two very good uses for it um, and I'll show you them hopefully here in a few minutes I'm going to actually demonstrate this this machine has cross field recording technology heads in it which means um, this machine uses quarter inch tape and that means and the quarter inch tape has four tracks on it and using this you can turn this I gotta look and see what if I turn this in this direction I'm recording on tracks three and two I can record on them individually and if I turn it in this direction I can record on one and four which you know if you're just doing a mono voice recording or whatnot You'd slow the tape down to the slowest speed and you could record a mono recording on all four different tracks of this tape of the tape and you could get a really long recording if you wanted to probably hours and hours long um, this is the roller over here just before the tape is into the head and this machine actually has a little tape cleaner that you can flip out there it's actually got a little pad on it that'll clean the tape before it goes into the head. Uh, this machine has a nice feature that my Sony machine does not have. And that is 
this machine has internal speakers. This machine has its own amplifier in it and it has a set of speakers in it so you can play back without having to have a external um, amplifier. Uh, it has individual volume controls and individual tone controls. Uh, this knob here compensates the speed. Uh, it has three different settings. That's a, you can record at seven and a half inches per second, three and three quarter inches per second, or an inch and seven eighths per second. Now, typically, for the best overall recording, I record at three and three quarter inches. Um, I'm going to go over the tape speeds here. This this uh, machine has what I believe is three different recording speeds. Uh, I'm going to go over those in a few minutes. I don't actually have the owner's manual to this machine, so I'm not exactly sure of the, all the technicalities of the speed, but I'll go over that in a few minutes. Right now, uh, I'll turn it sideways here so you can see some of the controls on the side. Um, down here, this is a switch to turn the internal speakers on or off. And it has a quarter inch stereo jack there. Hang on just a minute and I'll show you what that is for. Say like if you have this machine set up doing something in some kind of a production. For instance, I was using this recently in a play production. Um, if you have this hooked up to a PA system and you have the internal speaker shut off, you can plug a set of headphones into the side of it and you can still hear the audio without having to have the audio come through here. And you can just turn the, turn the volume down on the PA system so you're not getting volume in, out through the, the house speakers. This is a good feature. It also has a couple of plugs here. It has a plug for remote control that actually you can actually change the tracks on the 8 track player. And it also has a record, some kind of a recording playback jack there that I don't recognize. I don't know. Some kind of a weird format. Um, so we'll take a look at the back of the machine. On the back uh, we got a switch here to change it from 50 to 60 cycles. And it also has I believe you can change this to I believe you can change the voltage output on this too by the looks. There's a little bolt set for 110 volts right there. It's got a safety fuse. It's got a couple of quarter inch jacks out for for uh, speakers. Uh, this unit will play through like 8 ohm speakers. And you also have a couple of composite RCA jacks for the left and right out and you also have them for left and right in. Of course you got a big fan here for you have a fan here for the a cooling fan for the motor. And then let's turn it back around. Go on the other side. And there of course is the eight track player. That's where you put your eight track cartridge in. bring this back around. Um, I guess right now we're going to put the reels on here and I'll show you how to thread this thing up. And then we put the blank reel, the empty reel on the right side. This is com called the take up reel. And we put our loaded reel on this side. Now we grab our tape leader and make sure that the tape is not twisted. 
and we'll pull it around that roller and through the tape heads making sure that it is lined up uh, we put it up and through here over the pinch roller down around this auto stop arm and then up into our reel and grab a hold of this and pull it out through the side here and then I have to pull back the slack and I'm just going to run that around there a couple of RPMs to get that alright so basically we've got it threaded up and ready to play um, Okay, uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to record. I'm going to show you guys how to record with this unit. Uh, we have to put this into pause. That's important. When you put this in pause, when you switch on the record, you have to push this interlock button and turn this play knob all the way over to record. And this knob here is our fast forward and rewind button. Um, another reason for doing this, now that we have this machine powered up and we got it set to record, I'm going to run my tape ahead so that we got tape in the record, the leader's all out of here. Um, one reason we do this is so when you stop the machine, rather than switching it off here, you stop the tape from turning and that way you avoid hearing any clicks or pops on the tape, on the audio of the tape. Um, okay, so I've got an audio track here that I'm going to play. Uh, this is a free download from YouTube. It's an old gospel song. It's a it's a blues it's a blues version of a song called "This Little Light of Mine." It's just an instrumental. Um, I really, I really kind of like the sound of it, so I'm just going to play that back through it. I'll record it onto this first, then I'll play it back for you. I'm going to reset my tape counter here to zero. I'm going to start that recording and go start my computer playing. this again the other day. I'm just running the tape back by hand obviously because not much of it got. All right. Now before I start it recording again I got to adjust the recording level on that because it was way too much. So I'm going to start this recording, start this playing back. You can see on the view meters here that it's recording. Now we need to bring these to right around zero at the loudest point of the song. That, from what I found, works about the best. this roll and record well, that's all there is to, to recording with this now we just wait for the song to play through
see if I can zoom you guys in on the view meter so you guys can actually see what's going on with that. Lighting conditions are not optimal out here in this porch either. Now, instead of, I'm not going to actually turn this here, I'm going to pull that lever up there so I avoid any clicking or popping noise on the tape when I turn it, if I happen to stop the machine. That way of doing that, you could start the same recording, the next recording in the same way. You could let a little tape reel out and start your recording. Get the nice little pause in between without a bunch of crackling and popping. Um, this is something that was difficult to do with cassette tapes unless you actually had a pause button. I actually don't ever remember being smart enough to use a pause button on a cassette tape when I was recording. So, so I'm going to unplug my, this is the audio input cord to my old desktop computer. So now this thing, I'm going to rewind it. I'm going to try not to run the tape off the reel. First thing I'm going to do is stop that. I have to unpause this. We'll run her backwards. surprisingly there so the tape slipped a little bit not really a big deal but anyways okay so I'm just going to start the playback on this. Probably see audio put out of the right side. 
side is way stronger than the left. Okay, so I'm gonna stop that. Um, I haven't cleaned the heads on that for a long time, and when you're recording with one of these, that is one thing that is very, very important. You have to clean the heads. I actually recorded with this the other day, and it actually did do a pretty good job of recording, but now these tapes are old and probably pretty dirty. All right, I'm going to show you. This has a, I guess shut this off for a second. I'll show you th some things about tape speed. Um, this has a removable capstan post on here and you actually are supposed to store that right there. And turn this back on. Now this will be the slowest speed that this machine can achieve. And you have to turn, when you're recording at your slowest speed, you put that on inch and a quarter per second. As you can tell, it's very slow. However, if I leave this recording pin off from the capstan, or leave this pin, not a recording pin, it's just, a, just another bigger roller. But if I leave that off that caps and switch this to high speed, I believe it plays back at the same speed. It does. Okay. So that's two different speeds right there. Now, if I switch this back to low speed with this capstan on here, with this capstan adapter on here, we get the same, if this is on low, we get the same speed, obviously. So I'm going to put that back on there. With that on there, and you switch it to high speed, the tape goes super fast, and you could, you could record it at seven and a half inches per second. As you can see, that that little that little adapter on that capstan makes a huge difference in the tape speed. Um, I'm not. I have one one eight track tape here, but it's got copyrighted material on it, and I don't really want to play it back for a YouTube video, so I'm not going to do it. I will show you guys the tape cartridge, though. I guess. This is an old 8-track tape cartridge from 1960s or 70s. It has red Sovine Phantom 309. Uh, these weren't a real popular thing, especially for me. I didn't necessarily care for 8-tracks. I, I never had machines that would play them back very well, and I think that a lot of times the tapes got sticky and then stupid things too and they didn't they didn't necessarily like to play back that well but anyways uh, maybe I'll give you a little demonstration of what happens with the cross field thing here uh, tracks are on one apparently two tracks are on one side and then you have to turn the tape over to record on the other two tracks um, it's kind of confusing sometimes trust me but anyways I hope you like this demonstration of this unit um, 
Um, it's pretty well preserved, I think. Well, anyways, have a good evening. I gotta let you guys go.